future JS, and this has been happening um, lately in the past, I'd say, five years, it also helps that t uh, internet technology is advancing also, but GIS and the internet have kind of been growing together at the same time. And the, where GIS is going in the future is, is becoming more mainstream and becoming more and more available to the everyday user out there. Um, whether it's a, a local neighborhood you know, constituent um, or it's uh, a business uh, that wants to get information out there, um, like as far as like a store locator, which is a very basic function of GIS, but the everyday user can go in there, punch in a zip code, and it spits out exactly where the store is and uh, gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get there. MapQuest is the same thing. It's all GIS, but because the GIS technology is embedded into the simple user interface that's out there on the internet, that the user on the other end who's using it doesn't, doesn't know that it's GIS. They just know, hey, I can punch in my zip code and get the location of my business, get a location for the business that I need to go to. Uh, Google has done a great job with Google Earth and putting basically a full-blown GIS in the hands of, of the common internet user. It's, it's a wonderful tool and uh, I think people are really starting to realize what GIS is and the power of GIS, the power of it to take all of this information, layers and layers of information. You have satellite imagery overlaid on top of um, addresses and locations of golf courses and hotels and, and uh, you know, your local uh, government offices. I mean, all of this is available on Google Earth through a very simple and, and, and user-friendly graphical interface. Government has, is one of the main beneficiaries of GIS and they were the first ones that really started using GIS and started to see what GIS can do for them because any government agency is going to have a lot of information to deal with, a lot of records. Um, before they were stored in paper format and now they've been converting that stuff to digital format and finally now into GIS format and the good thing about GIS is, is that it can handle many different format types. So um, whether it's, it's uh, information about landowners or um, or land use or zoning, it can all be stored in GIS now before they had to go through uh, paper maps to get all this information. And now it's all available um, in digital format and in the GIS system. And the, the, good, the, uh, the biggest benefit of this is going to be the government can sort and sift through all this data and analyze it and actually report on it to local business owners and to their local constituents and people who live in the neighborhood and in that city and in that state. So basically, you, you know, they're, they're attracting business, they're attracting, they're making their, they're making their county, um, you know, very uh, tech, like technology, uh, te technologically like advanced, you know, compared to others. For example, there might be a county, might be within a state, there might be a lot of counties or some counties who are using enterprise GIS systems and they're publishing that information out on the internet. So they're making good use of that. Not only are they saving time um, for, for, the, for the local business owners, but they're saving their time for their workers and their budget because people are not coming into their office, or, you know, coming into the government office to ask for information. They're actually receiving this information online, which makes it very convenient for both. And uh, local, you know, local developers love it. Somebody from another state can go online and find out about which parcels are available for, for development. What's the zoning? You know, will I be able to put up this type of business in this neighborhood? Um, they can get all that information online if it's available, uh, if the county or the, or the city is providing the information online. They have it. Now, whether it's available in digital format is another story. The bigger counties, the bigger government agencies who have the budgets to invest in GIS do have this going. But even the smallest county and the smallest city can start with an implementation plan and start on their way to becoming more technologically advanced and getting this stuff ready and getting it on the internet for, for businesses and for their constituents to use. I can help by basically coming in and taking a look, doing a needs, uh, needs assessment. Uh, the needs assessment basically consists of 
uh, a GIS an analyst or GIS specialist like myself coming in and, and looking and seeing what are you you know what are you guys already doing? Maybe you guys already have data that I can readily use in GIS format, but you don't really realize it. And if you don't, basically, you know, I can sift through through the um, through what information you have and sort of come up with the needs assessment plan to figure out where you guys need to go and based on your budget and how um, how quickly you guys want to implement this GIS uh, will will depend on you know my advice will depend on what what kind of implementation plan I provide but that's where it starts it all starts from a GIS consultant coming in and taking a look at um, what you guys have what you guys want to do and coming up with a plan of action on how to implement it you can't afford not to have GIS really because GIS is the type of system where you might it, it's you know on, on the first end you might need to invest a little bit in the hardware and the software but most most cities and uh, counties already have the computer the computers in place the hardware um, the software itself is really not that expensive uh, compared to what you're spending on a, on an annual budget um, it can be done even I've done it even for cities that you know we're talking small cities uh, in Florida uh, we have come up with implementation plans for them to get out certain components you know you start with you, you at least start you, you, you start with your biggest concern if your biggest concern is that you're getting a lot of calls from residents about your about water main breaks and but you don't have a GIS system to monitor that well that's what you need to do then if that's your biggest concern is people coming into the in, into the office and calling or calling you know or flooding your call center with with that kind of stuff if your utility crews can't get out there and can't find the valve to shut off, and, or you know can't find the system, can't find the the main break because it's buried underground or whatever, um, you know a GIS can help answer these questions, and it's it's a time saver and it's going to be a money saver too because you can't afford not to invest in it. Everybody's doing it, and there's just eventually it's you're not going to be able to, to do without it. In in five minutes sitting behind your computer, you can isolate a main break, isolate a valve and figure out how to turn, what, you know, what valve you need to turn off, ra radio that to your crews who have laptops to their computers and it's gonna, and it's gonna basically t take them to that valve, you know, where to shut it off. So instead of them out there with a shovel and trying to dig it up, GIS makes that information available, even if it's been buried 